Let's pray. God, this is your word to us today. Each one of us is in a different place of life right now. Help us to help hear whatever we need to hear, to respond to whatever we need to respond to, to find the grace and the truth in your name. Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We will all face giants at one time or another in our lives. By giants, I am speaking of what seem to be insurmountable problems and issues. We try to slay these giants, but oftentimes it seems they only grow stronger with the passing of time. It can be a giant of fear, or it might be a giant of some type of personal sin that you fall into over and over again. It might be pride, envy, gluttony, or something else. In a related way, your, gi your giant is something that has a grip on your life. It's your marriage that it has a grip on. It's your child that it has a grip on. It's something that is against you, that is fighting against you. So how do we deal with these giants? How do we deal with the giants that plague our lives over and over again? We find the answers in the Old Testament account of David and the Goliath. And most of us are probably familiar with this story. See, <clears throat> Goliath was this huge giant of a man. And he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you, co why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome and kill him, you will become our servants, our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all of the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. They were dismayed and terrified. How many times do the giants in our life cause us fear? Cause us fear. That we're afraid to look upon those things because it takes so much for us to even look at it. It takes so much for us to even think about that problem. It takes so much for us to even try to confront that issue. We're terrified and we're afraid of what the outcome may be. So like the army of Israel, we sit and we watch and we get taunted day after day, month after month by the giants. But today I want to talk to you about facing your giants. Today we're going to see some giants fall. You see, in order to face your giants, I believe you have to fit, recognize what your giant represents. So the first giant I want to look at is the giant of the words spoken about you. If we look at David and David's life, David was the forgotten son. You see, God told the prophet Samuel, he said, I am no longer pleased with Saul. I am going to anoint myself a new king. So I want you to take up your, your, horn, your horn of anointing oil, and I want you to go to the house of Jesse. There I will anoint my new king. When Samuel went to the house of Jesse, he asked Jesse to bring all his sons because the king of Israel would be out of his house. He called all his sons except for David. David was forgotten. His own father didn't even want to, or didn't even bother to think about calling him when the prophet said, call all your sons. He was called a little ruddy boy. I mean, he couldn't possibly be king. Samuel himself looked at him and said, no. See, Samuel looked at the oldest and said, surely it must be him. Surely it must be the oldest, Eliad. The oil didn't flow. And he went through all of the other seven brothers, but the oil never flowed. And he even had to turn to Jesse and say, the oil's not flowing, but God told me that it would happen in this house. So do you have another son? See, the prophet had to remind Jesse, wait, you got another boy. And so he had them bring him in from out of the field. David was forgotten. Does this sound familiar for you? Have you had these type of words spoken about you? You are worthless. 
You'll never amount to anything. You're never going to succeed at anything. You'll never kick that habit. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never go far in this life. You'll always be. You're going to be just like your dad. You're going to be just like your mom. Those giant of the words spoken about you. But today we're going to slay that giant. The second type of giant you may face is the giant that you face in your own house. David was anointed king as a boy, but stayed in the same situation he was in. See, the Bible didn't say he got anointed king and then they took him to the palace. No, as a matter of fact, he got anointed king and he went right back out to the fields to be the same ruddy little shepherd boy that he had always been. See, just because the outward circumstances have not changed does not mean that there is nothing new about you. David's brothers knew that David had been anointed king. They were there. They watched the oil flow. He was the youngest, but he was told that one day he would rule Israel. There was some jealousy there. There was some jealousy. The brothers didn't like that. He was the youngest. As a matter of fact, in the story of Goliath, when, when Jesse tells David, I want you to go take this food to your brothers. They're out there fighting. David goes down and, and he takes the food, but as he giving them the food, he hears what Goliath is saying to the armies of Israel. He hears the taunting. He hears the name calling. He hears all of that. And he's trying to talk to the guys and say, hey, what, what, what is that guy talking about? What, what is he talking about over there? Why is he saying all those things? And this is what his brother said. His oldest brother heard him speaking with the men and he burned with anger against him and said, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Like, why did you leave your job? You're a little shepherd boy. What are you doing here? You don't belong on the battlefield. You see, I know how conceited you are. And I know how wicked your heart is. You came down here only to watch the battle. See, that jealousy reared its ugly head. What are you doing here? I don't want you around me. Get away from me. You're going to have naysayers in your life that do not believe that the anointing is up on you. You are going to have people in your life that look at you, that knew you when you were someone else. And they are going to say, there is no way God is going to use you. You will have people in your life when God says, stand up and go, they will say, you can't go. You are going to have a giant in your house. They can say, now what have I done? Can't I even speak? Can I not even ask a question? You got to knock out the naysayer. But there's another one. There's one more giant in your house, and this one is like Saul. See, the, the Bible then says that Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put on his coat of armor and bronze helmet on his head. <coughs> David tried walking around him, but he said, look, I, I can't go in this because I'm not used to it. You see, this is the giant in your household that wants to put all their junk on you. This is the person that wants to dump all their troubles on you. It may not be your issue, but they want it to be your issue. It may not be your fight, but they want it to be your fight. These are the people that just want to mess up your mess. See, they're always negative. They always got a problem with something. They're always dragging you into a situation for no reason. You know, this, this person comes with plenty of baggage. And like we talked about last week, you just need to let it go. But don't worry. We're going, to fight, we're going to slay that giant today. The third giant is the giant of your enemy. You see, the Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, David went back out into the fields after he was anointed, and the Bible says that during that time, he had to fight off lions and bears. Now, I want to take a moment there to, to, to let you know. You will get a word from God, and God will tell you you're going to do something in your life. And the moment you, you get that word, the thing that the devil's going to do is he's going to send somebody to kill it or destroy it. So you have to protect that which God has given you. You need to wrap it tight because somebody is going to come along the way and try to knock down the word that God has given you. In our text today, David hears Goliath taunting the Israelite army. He becomes enraged. He becomes so enraged, he said, who is that uncircumcised Philistine who would dare challenge the armies of the living God? He turned around, he said, you know what, King Saul? Don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. I got it, I got this, David. I got, I got 
this today. I'm gonna take care of this today. Don't worry about it. It's okay if you're scared. I got this. See, I want you to use your imagination and think about what this context, what this contest might have sounded like if it was on ESPN and had the broadcast rights. It may have sounded something like this: Ding, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Eli Arena for this afternoon's feature event. Introducing first the challenger fighting out of the Israelite camp. Standing 5'6 and weighs 124 pounds, he works with sheep and is part of the time, a part-time poet and a musician. He's been called a man after God's own heart, wearing a white tunic and nothing else. Here's David! His opponent fighting under the flag of the Philistine, he stands 9 feet 9 inches tall, weighs 438 pounds. He brings a record of 92 wins and no defeats. All victories coming by T-H-O, takes heads off. <laughs> the heavyweight champion of the world, Goliath. Let's get ready to rumble. Bam. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in a pouch on his shepherd's bag, and with this sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, big man he is, he has his shield bearer in front of him. He, he's not even carrying his own shield. He just kept walking closer to David. He looked up at David over and saw that he was nothing more than a little boy. He despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, come here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I have come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. The whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And as the Philistine moved closer to attack, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Ran quickly to meet him. Reaching into his bag, he pulled out a stone. He slung it, struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell to the face down on the ground. So that day, David triumphed over his giant, his Philistine, with a sling and a song. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. After that, the Bible says that David ran over, stood over him. He took the Philistine's own sword and cut off his head. You see, we all have giants. Well, there's the giants of the words that have been spoken over you, whether it's the giants of the people in your house, whether it's the giants of your enemy. You have them, and they're all shouting. You're not qualified for that job. You're not good enough. You can't pay your bills. You can't save your marriage. You're going to lose your kids. You cannot stop your vices. You can't shake your past failures. You don't have a bright future. Your life is a mistake. They are shouting at you today. But today is the day you will stand up and face your giants. Because you're going to stand up with the same tactics that God gave Jack, that God gave David. The first tactic is to fasten yourself to the power source. Fasten yourself to the power source. David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. You see, David didn't say, I fought the lion, I fought the bear, and I delivered my flock. He didn't say that. He said, the Lord who delivered me. The same thing I read from you today. The battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. We gotta fasten in to the source. And that source is the power of God. Like our electronic appliances, they're useless if they're not connected to a power source. We have got to connect ourselves to the power source. You can say it like this, I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where is your power source today? Secondly, you got to focus on your call. You are enough. 
And to be honest, I'm about to tear them some TD Jakes right about now. You see, you cannot defeat your giant until you believe what you got is enough. Until you believe who you are is enough. You can't defeat your giant. You gotta know that what you got and who you are enough. You need to be able to say, I am enough. I don't need any armies to help me. I don't need Eliab to believe in me. I don't need Saul's armor to fight with because what I have is enough. Let's think about all the things that said that David was enough, that David wasn't enough. His dad didn't think he was enough, so he didn't bring him in to get anointed. When the prophet saw David, he didn't think he was enough, and he tried to anoint someone else. When his brother saw him on the battlefield, he said, you're not enough. When Saul saw him, Saul said, you're only a young boy, you're not enough. When Goliath saw him coming at him, Goliath said, you're not enough. David was the only person that thought he was enough. And as a man thinking in and of himself, so is he. What do you think about yourself today? Do you think you are enough? Do you believe that you are enough today? Do you believe that you have been equipped and you are enough. You see, David ignored his haters. His brother said Goliath was unconquerable. It couldn't be done. The Israelite army said it couldn't be done. The king said it couldn't be done. But David chose to rise above the critics. He chose not to focus on what other people said could not be done, but what on, on what he had seen God do in the past. And that was enough. Even when everything around you may say you are not enough, you are enough. Trust that you are enough. Have the faith in yourself to know that God has said you are enough. See, you don't need your Goliath to believe that you are enough. You don't need your brothers to believe that you are enough. See, some of us are waiting around for someone to tell us you're good enough to serve God. Some of us are waiting around for someone to tell us you're good enough to step into that job. Some of us are waiting around for someone to tell us you're good enough to get married. Some of us are waiting around for someone to tell us you're good enough so that that doesn't happen to you anymore. Some of you are, are still waiting around for someone to tell you you're good enough. Let me share something with you today. God has already called you good enough because he said even before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and called you and set you apart as a prophet to the nation. God called you enough even before you took your first breath. You are more than enough. The Bible says it like this, you are more than conquerors. <laughs> you are more than conquerors. A giant is nothing compared to who you are. A giant is nothing compared to what God has said you are. You have to believe today that you are more than a conqueror. So we got to fasten ourselves to the power source. We got to focus on our call because we are more than enough. Then we got to face our fears by faith. You know, I like the way David took on the life. David looked at this giant of a man. But giant, the giant was walking toward David. The Bible says that David didn't stand in one spot. The Bible says that when the Philistine giant started walking toward David, it didn't say David stood there and waited on him. David didn't wait for the giant to get to him. David didn't care that the giant was walking toward him. David said, you my giant, you the wall I gotta go through. See, this was a transition stage for David because after this he was no longer a shepherd. He was about to get ready to go to the palace. He was gonna go from the pasture with the sheep to the palace. And he knew the only way I'm gonna get there is if I go through you. The only way I'm getting to where God wants me to be is when I go through my giants. I can't go around my giants. I can't go to the side of my giants. I have got to go through my giants. That is where I'm gonna get to where God wants me to go. So David said, that's my giant right over there. That is what's holding me back from getting what God has called me to get. So this is what David did. David said, I'm going. <laughs> David didn't care that he was a little boy. David took off and ran toward the giant. David said, I know I got this victory. 
the Lord. The power of God. Wherever the enemy is attacking you today, whatever it may be, I don't know where you are. See, I'm going to be honest with you right now. There's some attacks. I'm going to be really honest with you because we're about to start small groups and cell groups. We're about to get this thing started and watch God explode this church. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm feeling some attacking. I'm feeling some naysayers. I'm feeling some hurt, some, 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 some enemy trying to come up on me and say, no, you can't do that. I'm feeling it. But I call the devil a liar today. I call the devil a liar. No matter what, if God called me to do it,